I want to push the button. Did you push the button? I want to push the button. I wanted to push the button. Susan pushed the button. Okay. Hey, we're Trap Fishing in America. Welcome. It's time. Our second one. First one was tough. <laughs> was scary. We hope that, that the uh, video and the audio were coming in a little better this time. We're working hard on improving that. First time we did one of these uh, live video stream things, it was we hadn't seen each other in over a month. We've uh, started to get together and play some music again together mm -hmm. from time to time during the week, and it's been a lot of fun. Tomorrow marks the very first, the anniversary, the 28th anniversary of our move to Northwest Arkansas, June the 1st. Uh, I had just left the Kerrville Folk Festival, which is where I'm supposed to be today. But uh, we were playing the Kerrville Folk Festival, and we packed up afterwards and got the cats and the, the wives and the kids and moved up to Arkansas. And uh, it was it's 28 years ago. That was back in 1992. This is a song about a play set that Keith and I built for my kids. During that move, we brought the play set with us. I took it apart. That's right. All of it apart, put it in boxes, and brought it up to Arkansas. And it was about two or three years <laughs> later before I attempted to put that together. I put it together with the help of my brother-in-law. And it's a song called 11 Easy Steps. I want to thank you for not calling me the second time. I appreciate that. <laughs> Two, three, four. Sometimes I drag my 
what to do after you finish the song, didn't it? Well, you gotta wait for the applause to die down and kind of watch people get up and shuffle around a little bit. Virtual applause, applause is really weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a song by one of our songwriting heroes. His name is Michael Smith. Michael Peter Smith? I don't know. Michael Smith from Chicago. The one that wrote all the good songs. A song about a man who lived a long time ago. He had a lot of stuff. He doesn't appreciate it as much as he once did. Don't do that much. 
much for you. Two hours wrapped up in them candy Egyptian blues. Oh, Mr. Tut, they dig the tune. Yeah, all oh, that gold leaf brightens up the room. But what's the dip when your stiff work riff they're playing? When your ears have spent 5,000 years decaying What does it matter what possessions you may boast When you're just a ghost, it's only jive Five, your sarcophagus is glowing But your esophagus is showing Who cares how rich you are, love what you look like Boris Karloff, call not to this They might even refund your do 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 Cause you are wrapped up in them dead Egyptians Just wait and see Another few thousand years They're gonna dig up me And I'll have all my little treasures Near at hand A CD of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club man. A little dried up Maui While we crumbled in a bowl A letter from my honey Saying that you get so long Some peanut butter sandwiches And a long return to sand Gold or silver button I think you'll understand that in my way I'll be just like you All wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues How wrapped up How wrapped up How wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues All right <laughs> Well, it looks like, what are we going to do next here, Ezra? We're going to drag something out of the closet is what we're going to do. We've been sitting at home playing stuff, going over stuff that we haven't done in a while. And this song came out, it gets a bit of an exclamation and a bit of show and tell as well. I have to say that show and tell as well. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Hold on. Last time we uh, we did this, a lot of people asked to hear this song, and at that point we did not know how to play it. Yes, we did write <laughs> it, but we did not know how to play it. So um, when I was a kid, I lived in Baltimore, Maryland, and my parents were beatnik people. That's what they were like, and their friends were beatnik people, and. For some reason, there was going to be a great exchange of gifts from between my mom and a woman named Eve Donahue. Eve Donahue was a painter. She was one of our painter artist friends. And uh, Eve painted a lot of these paintings that I just loved as a young man. They were basically Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with serpents coiled in an upward motion around Eve's legs, her lovely legs. And... I was so excited we were going to get one of these pictures from Eve Donahue. They had dragons and all kinds of stuff in them. So the big day came and we got the picture. And it was the picture of a building. I still have that picture. And I thought maybe you guys might be interested in seeing that picture. Now this is the picture. It has been hanging in my house since I was a child. I lift it up a little bit. Is that good? All right. Now, this painting is of the intersection of Park Avenue and Tyson Street. Or at least that's what I thought it was. At least when we wrote the song, I thought it was. But when I went back to Baltimore, either they had changed the building or changed the streets. I don't know. But that wasn't the exact intersection. But Park Avenue was where the business was. Tyson Street was a little offshoot street that went on the other side of that um what do you call those? Uh, iron, uh, flat iron buildings. Yeah. On the other side, it was a little short jog off. And that's where all the artists lived uh, in, in that area. And their kids were always grubby and dirty. And they had chalk murals on the street. And it, it was such 
an interesting divergence that that's sort of where this song came from. That's exactly where this song came from. So it's Park Avenue and Tyson Street. Arkansas Democrat Gazette today, there was a lovely article about this live stream video and about Trout Fishing America and what we're doing. I'd like to thank Becca for doing this article. Very nice. I know she's watching and Amanda too. So a nice hello to Becca and Amanda. You know what we're going to do right now? 
She, in her article, she talked about us writing some new material. And guess what? We decided to do a new song for you. To try to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do the best we can. This is the world premiere of this song. And it's a song written during quarantine lockdown times. And, uh, man, we sure have enjoyed writing it. Two, oh, one, two, three, and... new trout song it's called knock me down yep that's what it's called well folks i would like to turn it over to the star of our show at this point he's going to come out and sing a little song for us he's the youngest member of the band trout fishing in america i'd also like to point out he is the shortest member of the band we've been told he's probably the most intelligent member of the band here he is. His name is Charles. Charles Berry. And he's going to sing a song for you that was written over a hundred years ago, way back in 1907. We want you to watch very closely as he sings this entire next song without moving his lips. What's the range he's going to use? He'll be singing in a baritone. Oh, good. If you go out on the woods today, be sure for a big surprise. If you go out on the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every barrel that ever there was, we'll gather there for certain. Because today is the day the teddy bears have their pit, pick, pit. Nick time for teddy bears The little teddy bears are having a lovely day today Watch them catch them unaware And see them picnic on their holiday 
see them gaily get about. They love to play and shout, they never have any care. At six o'clock, their mummies and daddies will take them home to bed because they're tired little teddy bears. Woohoo! Listen to all that applause, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna call an audible right here. Thank you, Charles. I'm gonna, call, are... I'm gonna call an audible. We're gonna do this song. I just think it follows that one really nicely. I'm gonna stand up and you're gonna still, you lost my head. Don't worry about getting me. You got my head? Okay. Barely. Barely. I get what you just see what you just did there. All right. This is an audible. We have not planned for this. We have an actual set list down there, but we're not going to do that. We've but never actually played any set that I have ever written. I write it, and something else happens. What is it? We're going to maintain social distance, though, just yeah, so okay, you know. Fine. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 wheels on a big wig. Folks, I know that was impressive. This will be more impressive because now we're going to count together six feet apart and in harmony. Oh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen 15, 16, 17, 18 wheels is on a big wig. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah, pretty impressive, huh? Okay, Ezra, what are you going to do now? I'm going to back the big ring up. All right, do it. Here it comes. Oh, there's 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wheels on a big rig. And now we're going to count the even numbered wheels. Oh, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 wheels on a big rig. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. And now, as we're moving on to the other side of the big rig, where you will count the odd numbered wheels. Oh, there's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17 wheels on a big wheel. You know you messed it up. I did not mess it yes, up. That did. was, in fact, sequentially unimpeachable. And people out there that were watching can probably tell you that that was sequentially unimpeachable because it meant it was in the proper numerical order. Thank you so very much. Yeah, but you slowed down in the passing lane. This is, of course, a counting song and not a driving song. But if you're so smart, please count it off in Roman numerals for everybody. I hope after three months I'm still as smart as I used to be. This is unrehearsed, folks. I might need some help. Oh, there's I, 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 V, 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 I, V, I, I, V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, I, I. Wheels on a big rig, and they're rolling, 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 rolling. That's pretty good, Keith. That's real good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, what are you going to do to finish this up? Do you remember? <laughs> I was forgetting there for a second, but I will divide the wheels of a big rig by the number pi to its tenth place and somewhere over the rainbow. Here it comes. Oh, there's 3.141593256712 something over the rainbow on a big rig. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Had to do it. Had to do it. Now, we back to our regularly scheduled program. Folks, it's only just going to get worse. He's going to pick up the banjo, of course. Yes, yes. And he is picking up the electric banjo. I'd like to send this song out to my buddy Matthew Harris over there in Winslow, Arkansas. I don't know. You ever seen one of these things, this electric banjo? It's pretty cool. We wrote this song with a guy named Craig Calvert, and it was about the driving rain and driving. Remember, that's something we all used to do. We used to drive. I think I've had one tank of gas for three months in the van. Now, usually you use 
many tanks of gas every day in the van. That's us. But uh, anyway, here we are, driving rain. Funky banjo. Now this is just what the doctor ordered. Playing music for you, for us, is a big deal. It is just what I need today, every day. Shoot, no, I do. I miss that. I miss playing for you in person. But this will do. This will do just fine. That's what I was just thinking. If we do some more of these. Uh, I know during some sporting events, they're talking about putting cardboard cutouts of an audience in, up in the stands <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. I think maybe we could have a cardboard cutout audience in front of us. I don't know who would design that, but <laughs> it would feel really good. 
So digging back into our old stuff, years ago, we, we worked as a duo for a, for a long time. We would drive from anywhere in the world, which often was Shreveport, Louisiana, or somewhere far away, and get home after doing a weekend's worth of work and play in Galveston on Sunday. And that meant there was not much sleep in advance of setting up the PA and getting on stage and playing in Galveston. And we would usually do three one-hour sets. But one of the best things about doing that when we did it at the Surfside Patio Bar in Galveston was a couple of buddies of ours, David Egan and Mike Sipos, otherwise known as the Yat would also drive from Shreveport to play with us on those days. We do a couple of songs with Galveston in mind. First one is one that we wrote. It's called Almost September. It's kind of a our version of our beach experience. It was not what the Beach Boys were living through. We had Galveston. <laughs> it was good. Good. one that David Egan wrote, a song called Sing It. And, uh, 
We've done this song for a bunch of years and want to invite all of you to sing along with us out there. We'll be able to tell. <laughs> so, Susan, is anybody watching this thing? Oh, only about 337 people. 337 people right now. That's pretty good. But we need more. We need you to call your friends. Please, call your friends. Tell them the fabulous, fabulous, new, improved trout fishing in America. Oh, wait, the legendary trout fishing in America is doing a live stream broadcast. Is that what this is called? Good job. I keep wanting to say podcast, but this is not a podcast, right? It's podcast with visual. Oh, okay, fine. And this is in the key of D. <laughs> this is in the key of D. <laughs> That's where I was going for an E, which is the way we used to sing it, but we got all Times have changed. Perspective has changed. Two, three, four. Impressive here, isn't it? You didn't know that my lava lamp came with a strobe light attachment. I too? had no idea. Or are uh, we having a flashback? <laughs> I hope not. We're going to take you way, way. Do you want to leave it on? Like yeah, I do. I want to leave it on while it flashes. Okay, it's going to leave, stay on and flash. Oh man, I'm going to take you back into Ezra's childhood now. Absolutely. This is um, when I was a kid. My favorite band was the Kingston Trio. Just just it. We had we had their record. It had Bunawa Fast Freight on it. And um, 
I had this fantasy when I was a kid. I had a snare drum. I got a snare drum mowing a lawn. Instead of getting money, I got paid in a snare drum. And I would set up the record player and put on the Kingston Trio record with a snare drum. And then around the bed would be books because I didn't have any other drums. And I would open the windows and I would play along with the Kingston Trio, hoping, knowing in the back of my mind that they might, all three of them, be walking up my street in Baltimore, hear this little boy playing their stuff so well, and knock on the door and we would become the Kingston Quartet. That was my fantasy when I was a kid. And this is a song from that album. And this song, this is, the Kingston Trio was a folk band. And when you think of folk music, you generally think about work songs and, you know, that kind of stuff. They kind of pushed the boundaries. Earlier, we played a song by Michael Smith, who's also classified as a folk songwriter. But he kind of pushes the boundaries of folk music into jazz as well. This is one of my first introductions to jazz. And frankly, I couldn't play these chords until just a few weeks ago. He can play the drum part really well. Though. I kill it on the drums. Give me a couple books and the snare drum. I got this thing down. The scotch and soda, but in your eye, baby, do I feel high? Oh me, oh my. Dry martini, the sugar of gin. Oh, what a spell you've got me in. Oh, my, do I feel high? People won't believe me, they'll think that I'm just bragging. But I could feel the way I do And still be on the wagon All I need is one of your smiles The sunshine of your eye Oh me, oh my Do I feel higher than a kite can fly Follow sweet by Salty. <laughs> we'll make Keith sing this next song. Well, I get to sing this song. This song came from a personal experience when I was very young. I was extremely shy. And I would meet a beautiful young woman and I would not know what to say to her. But now that I am an older man, with much longer hair, I might add. You know, when I first met Keith, his hair went up. It didn't go down. It, it defied gravity. It went in curls like all around his head like really that. think Art Garfunkel tall. I, you know, I needed every inch I could get, you know. But anyway, it uh, it doesn't do that anymore. It just kind of lays down. And I'm going to see how far it's going to lay down. So we're going we're gonna to watch this and see what happens, okay? One, two, anyway. one, two, three, yeah. Where's your mama? Where's your mama? So fine. Where were you when I was? 
as I always like to say, it takes a lot of years to write a song like that. So what do we got? We got about one more song, two more songs, something like that. Susan, do you know anything else we should play? Because we know what we haven't played for the last song. Do you know anything else? No? Um, well, you can always put people to sleep first. Let's do it. Ah. We will do it. Time to take a nap. You know, I was thinking, right before we started this, I had to turn off my cell phone so it didn't ring while we were in here. And I was thinking... You guys don't have to worry about that where you are right now. You can leave your cell phone on. <laughs> you can put us on pause, walk away, and come back. Really, thank all of you for being here today. This is something we've been looking forward to doing, and we're almost done. But thank you. It's, we appreciate your continued support of us and uh, the things that we're doing. Eventually, you'll want to wake up. She will. 
And when you do, you'll probably need some coffee. It is now time for the history of the world as seen through the proper cup of coffee. This is a sing-along. We expect you to sing along with it at home. But first, the bass solo. Sultan sat on his oriental mat in his harem in downtown Persia. He took a sip of coffee just to drip, and he said to his servant, Kershia, Ah, Persia, 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 that's the worst cup of coffee in Persia. Cause... Okay, now listen up if you don't know the words, because this is the part we're going to want you to sing along with. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper cup of pot. Iron coffee pots, in tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Have you got it? Good, we'll join in. And please take my part. In days of old, when nights and remember bold, and whiskey was much cheaper, Nick Turpin rode to a coffee shop and showed his pistols to the keeper. He said, stand and deliver, can't you see that I'm all a quiver? Cause, help us out now. All I want is a proper cup of coffee, made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper cup of pot. Iron coffee pots in tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Da -da -da. Found that he was in the cart and he lost that water to fight. He gave his sword to Wellington, to my lord, and he said, Those bridges can't get fed. Now you had your water to do, sir. Tell me what? In me hilly with you, sir. Can you get me? I know that was startling seeing a couple guys from Northwest Arkansas singing French so fluently and with such perfect accents. This is, however, your last chance to sing along with the band. Quite possibly the most effervescent and enthusiastic portion of our program. Now King Solomon and his queen carry on, so we heard the ancient scandals. Butter, lots of silver coffee pots with diamond legs and handles. And said the queen of Sheba, I'd rather have any old Sheba. Now sing it by yourself. Very quiet, Ezra. They're faking it. They are. You know, it's easier to do it if you clap your hands and play a little faster. It's easier to think. Let's go! All I want is never coffee, baby. I may be up and down, but I'm going to have a coffee and coffee. 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 Thank you all so much. We'll do this again. We'll let you know when we're going to do it again. Thanks for being here. We have been Trout Fishing in America, and we will continue to be Trout Fishing in America. You be you. <laughs>